Timberwolves fans, it's being reported already, pre-draft now, that the Wolves are shopping star Max point guard D'Angelo Russell. Now, a lot of us saw this coming. I've been saying for a while, I want this to happen. I want him to be moved, and the reports are finally starting to leak out. What's it look like? Is he being shopped? Who's reporting it? Why? When? Where? Whatever. And let's go over some teams he could be traded to. In terms of what a trade could actually look like, that might just be its own separate video tomorrow or the next day, whatever, whatever. So, let's get to all of that right now. All right, folks, so talking D'Angelo Russell. First of all, I haven't been uploading as much as I want to be, but pulling back the curtain a bit here. About a month ago, YouTube emailed me and they were like, no more ads, no more ads on your videos. Sorry, you've been uploading weird content. I was like, okay, wrong, but whatever. So had to work a little more. So sorry, I'll try to get back to regular scheduling. Hope you all appreciate the videos though. Let's talk D'Angelo Russell. He is reportedly being shopped according to Kevin O'Connor of TheRinger.com and we'll go over just the article that kind of talks about it right now. It's from Bring Me The News. They're reporting on the report from Kevin O'Connor and once again, here it is. We'll just kind of read through this, talk about what it looks like. All right. After D'Angelo Russell no-showed in Minnesota's first playoff round loss to the Grizzlies, the Wolves point guard entering next season, the situation appears to be in flux. Just over a week before the draft, Wolves are reportedly exploring trade suitors for Russell. This report comes from Kevin O'Connor, who specifically says Russell is being shopped around. Doesn't get much more blunt than that, does it, folks? Continuing on here, Russell, 26, is entering the final year of his contract. That in and of itself is incredibly valuable, considering whichever team he plays for could clear $31 million from the salary cap ahead of next summer's free agent class. Expiring contract, valuable. In that class, we'll have John Morant, Bradley Beal, Middleton, Jokic, Irving, Fred Van Vliet, and star, stars like LeBron James, James Harden, Russell Westbrook. Basically, to kind of sum it up a bit more, whoever has D'Angelo Russell this year will, after this season, have a max contract slot basically empty, like have one open up completely and be able to bring in one of these guys if they hit the free agent market. Now, are all these guys going to be free agents? No. D'Angelo Russell, though, if he's gone, if you have him, you could go for one of these guys. For the Wolves, the reason I don't want to hang on to them is because, well, this this year sh this year coming up to me should be less about, you know, waiting for next offseason, more about going in, trying to win, and winning a playoff series. I don't think that is done with D'Angelo Russell. I think you have a better chance doing that in a trade, and then when next offseason rolls around, you deal with it then. Anyways. Finishing it off, of course, an expiring contract isn't the only thing attractive about Russell. Keep in mind, he's still quite young, 26, plays a premium position, point guard, and has a track record of being a clutch scorer, unless it's playoff time, am I right? Sorry, it didn't work out that way in the playoffs for the Wolves, but they definitely don't win 46 games without him. That's true, that's a big part of my argument. It's always, oh, you think D'Lo sucks? No, I don't. I didn't say that. I said the Wolves can't go where every team wants to go with D'Angelo Russell as their starting point guard. Can't is a strong word. More like high, highly unlikely that they won't. Uh, yeah, he can win you 46 games. He can lead you to 46, 48 wins. Sure, not lead you, but be a part of it. But I don't think he's that guy in the playoffs. I don't think he's the best fit alongside Carl Anthony Towns and Anthony Edwards which is something we saw a lot. I think Cat, Ant, those are the two pillars going forward. It was the big three of Cat, Ant, D'Lo. We all know. But I think one of those three, it's time to move on because all three of them are really good. Or They really need the ball in their hands. They really need to be scoring. D'Angelo Russell, I think, is built to be a top two scoring option on a team. And if you have a team with Carl Anthony Towns and Anthony Edwards as well as guys like Malik Beasley. I think the better fit is a point guard that doesn't look for his shot all the time, or really even at all, which is, you know, not just Tyus Jones-esque. He's my, he is always my go-to for type of point guard. Tyus Jones would be so nice on this team, the way he can maneuver an offense, the passing, good stuff. Ricky Rubio is kind of like that, but I don't know. Tyus Jones just quicker, just more explosive. He can hit more shots as well. 
Rubio's fun. But yeah, Tyus Jones is like the exact player I would absolutely love on this Timberwolves team, playing alongside Anthony Edwards and Carl Anthony Towns. Now, trade value-wise, D'Angelo Russell, it's tough to pinpoint exactly what it is. Going back to the last huge trade the Wolves made, seemingly, was the Andrew Wiggins trade for, D for well, D'Angelo Russell, how it comes full circle. Wiggins' value required the Wolves to also give up a first-round pick just to move off of him. That kind of leaves a sour taste in our mouth for trades like this. Will that be what it takes to get D'Angelo Russell out of Minnesota? I certainly do not think so, and if it is, I don't think they move him. A couple reasons for that. One, uh, D'Angelo Russell's reputation is better than Andrew Wiggins was when he was in Minnesota still. Wiggins was looked at kind of as a bust, a guy that didn't really work hard, a guy that just didn't have it in him, just a max player with key part. Still like four years left on his contract when Minnesota traded him. Golden State took him on, and they, you know, it's looking like they made a good choice, of course, they kind of, admittedly, won that trade, of course, getting a top 10 pick in that as well. But yeah, at the time, Wiggins was viewed as a very negative asset, and for, you know, for good reason. Right now, he's turned himself into a nice player. But way back then, not so much. D'Angelo Russell right now may not be the most positive asset. You're not getting LeBron James for him, but you can get a nice, solid package. You can, you can, you're not giving up things just to move off of him. He's an expiring contract that helps a lot, and he can also help teams win right now. He can help teams take that step that the Timberwolves took this year. He can help a team reach the playoffs. A team that just wants to get there. You know, they have the pieces just missing stability at the point guard position. So value, not like Wiggins. If a team is trying to just reach the playoffs, D'Angelo Russell is a solid, stable point guard that can score, that can pass, play some semblance of defense when he wants to. But we're all wondering, what teams could those be? Well, lucky for you, I've got five that I wrote down that could be nice fits for D'Angelo Russell. These aren't necessarily in order of like, how much these teams could use Russell. Just teams I've seen thrown around, teams that to me seem like good fits, and I've, you know, we'll talk about those now. Starting with team one of five, the New York Knicks. This team has probably been thrown around the most in D'Angelo Russell trades, and for, you know, pretty good reason. Main reason, at least among Wolves fans, is Gerson Rosas is now with the Knicks. In case y'all don't remember, Gerson Rosas was the biggest fan of D'Angelo Russell. He would have traded anything. He would have traded his firstborn for D'Angelo Russell if it came down to it. The man gave up a top three pair, a first round pick. It was wild. He loves him. It's crazy. Anyways, Rosas now with the Knicks. And that's not all. Of course, just because he's there doesn't mean they're going to trade for him. But they really need some point guard stability. And they're just looking to get back to the playoffs after a really rough year in New York. They've got some real nice pieces over there, starting with Julius Randle and some stability with a you know, average to above average starting point guard could really, really help that team. D'Angelo Russell, kind of the perfect guy. What does the trade look like? Well, that's in the next video. In the next video, I'll have a trade from each of these teams, kind of outlining what it could look like. And then moving on, team number two, the Wizards. The Wizards have been thrown around a bit just because, well, Bradley Beal, it's almost contract time. It's almost decision time on whether he's going to be staying in Washington or not. And in order to get a guy like Bradley Beal to stay, you got to start winning. And like the Knicks, the Wizards are just trying and trying to take that next step to reach the playoffs, to be just a relevant team again. Beal seems like a pretty loyal guy, but like Towns, that can change if you never start winning. But bring in D'Angelo Russell to play alongside Bradley Beal, Kristaps Porzingis, and that trio can get you to the play-in game. It certainly can, no doubt about that in my mind. That gets you to the play-in game. Now, is that Bradley Beal's wish? Is that all he wants? Certainly not, but it helps a lot to get there. I like the fit I do with D'Lo and Bradley Beal quite a bit. Both of them nice, you know, ball-dominant scorers, and they can get it to each other. Porzingis has a big, certainly isn't Carl Anthony Towns, but he's solid. Solid for sure. Former All-Star, a lot left in the tank, just needed a change of scenery, and maybe he'll be alright next to guys like D'Lo and Beal. I think that fit is very, very nice. Bringing us to team number three, a team that, of course, just because 
whenever a player might be traded, this team is thrown around in every single deal. The Los Angeles Lakers. Now, I don't think this one gets done, but I want to throw them in because I like the fit. I like D'Angelo Russell next to LeBron James and Anthony Davis. I think that could work really well. I do. But who the hell are they trading to Minnesota for that? Russell Westbrook? No thank you. No chance in hell I'm taking that on. But the Lakers, they need an injection of youth. D'Angelo Russell is 26 years old. Again, I think he'd fit great next to LeBron, next to Anthony Davis. It's just a stability at the point guard position. Again, you know, just like the other two teams. A lot of this, uh, pretty much all of these teams, a big component is just taking that next step with stability at the point guard. Replicating what the Wolves did with D'Angelo Russell. They didn't have much there. They just wanted to get the playoffs. D'Angelo Russell helped them get that done. When teams want to take that next step, goodbye D'Lo. But yeah, that's the first three teams. Knicks, Wizards, Lakers. Fourth, Mavericks. This is an interesting one because Jalen Brunson could potentially be leaving in free agency. He's going to get paid this offseason. Again, probably maybe going to be leaving. And for the, you know, Mavericks, they'll just be looking for a replacement point guard to fit alongside Luka. They're not going to go sign some random, you know, some backup off the free agent market. They're going to want a premier player at their point guard position to help Luka Doncic. That just makes sense. And the most obvious option, unless they're going to go get Donovan Mitchell, is D'Angelo Russell again. Unless Brunson just stays in that case, probably throw this one out. Because, you know, the money just might not work. But D'Angelo Russell, replacing Brunson, I think it just makes sense. Fit is nice. Don't love it alongside... I don't love it with the Mavs, but I could see it. They could be shopping him there if Brunson leaves. Final team, one that I've thrown around or seen a lot, but one that I'm not totally sure of, is the Indiana Pacers. Now, the Pacers, for years, have been the team that have just been threatening to trade everybody. Miles Turner has been mocked to the Wolves 8,000 times. Uh, you know, just that team. <laughs> They're a weird team. And I gotta throw them in here because, well, they've been mocked just like that. Miles Turner, guys like that, been mocked constantly. Tyrese Halliburton, bring him down for D'Angelo Russell. No, I don't know how that works, but hey, Wolves and Pacers seem like eventually they've got to be making a trade. They're probably the least likely, least my least favorite fit for D'Lo out of all these five, but it's a team to watch out for. Sleeper, D'Angelo Russell, trading team. Anyways, those are my five teams. In the next couple days, I'll have a trade to each of those five that the Wolves could pull off. We'll see. We'll see. We'll, so we'll be watching out for that video. It'll be a real fun one. We all love those. Yeah, but now, you see there's still time left on this video. Why? How? Well, folks, we've got a, less than a week now, I think, until the NBA draft. And on this channel, we have the segment Mock a Day until the NBA draft. Of course, that means starting, well, June 1st, really, and going up until the NBA draft. Every single day, we check out a mock draft. If we miss a day for a video, we go back and just, you know, tally up the days, find one from those days, and go from there. The mock draft tally thus far is Blake Wesley, Ty Ty Washington Jr. three times, Marion Bochamp two times, Oshai Agbaji once, Tari Eason once, Nikola Jovic once, and EJ Liddell once. Today's mocks though, you know, staying on the D'Angelo Russell topic, well, there's a bit of a spoiler. For the fourth time, this player is being mocked to the Timberwolves, and it is going to it now. Load in. Oh, jeez, now I gotta scroll. Awkward. I'm not gonna cut this out either. Screw you. Ty Ty Washington Jr. For the fourth time, being mocked to the Wolves. Guard out of Kentucky. Let's see if we click on it a little? Yeah, we can. The blurb. D'Lo is being shopped around, so it makes sense for the Wolves to target a shot creator with this selection. Ty Ty and Cat could make for a lethal pick and roll pairing. Heard that about D'Lo too. And with Anthony Edwards resembling a superstar in the playoffs and in the new movie Hustle, Minnesota would be equipped with a dynamic offense. Whatever Russell would return in a trade could only booster their roster even more. Correct. Now should we look at this? This is good stuff. Height 6'2", age nearly 20 but 19 and a half. 196 pounds, 12.2 points last year, 34% basically 3 point shooting. 4.1 assists, 3.1 steals. He's a versatile shot creator with a great feel for making his teammates better. 
and though he'll unlock new dimensions to his game if he extends his range behind the arc. That's that's a lot of words, but he, he can play make well, he can perimeter shoot well, and he has a nice feel for the game. Pluses, minuses, you can read though, you can pause and read them if you want to. I'm not going to read them because I hate reading. Anyways, <laughs> that's our first mock of the day, tie tied to the wolves for what is that, a fourth time now? Interesting. That seems to be the common selection. Will it continue in our next two mocks? First, we're going to go to Sports Illustrated, and we're going to go there. So this one, no, he is not. From SI.com, at 19, the Timberwolves select, for the second time on our mock draft tally, EJ Liddell, forward from Ohio State. 6'7", 240, 21 years old. With former Nuggets boss Tim Connolly now helming basketball operations in Minnesota, it's a tad... Sorry. Ooh, it's a tad unclear which direction the Wolves will take with this pick. Considering the state of the roster, a lot of money tied up in the backcourt, logical spot to eye frontcourt help. While Liddell doesn't have ideal size for a power forward, he's a reliable, versatile player who can play around the rim, on the perimeter, and fit in a range of lineups. And as Minnesota looks to find the right pieces to complement their two stars, a broadly useful player like Liddell makes some sense as part of the supporting cast. Now, Liddell has been one of my favorite players for the Wolves to target as a power forward option next to Cat. Some are saying he can play small ball 5, which, yes, maybe, I don't love that, but as a power forward option with Jared Vanderbilt there, I think the Wolves need a much better backup, starting power forward, whatever, just power forward alongside Vando. I think Liddell makes a lot of sense. So there's that pick, second time he's been mocked to the Wolves this month in our tally. And now, we have one more to go over. From USA Today, a site that we haven't actually really done yet, so let me just uh, find it. Here it is. Uh, 19, Minnesota Timberwolves, Jalen Williams. And I know this is a guy a lot of you, a lot of the commenters have really been wanting. Jalen Williams. And Williams, here's the words here, just 6 foot 4 without shoes, but his max vertical is 12 feet. He's ahead of vertical athletes like Aaron Gordon and John Collins, as well as rim protectors like Rudy Gobert. That's pretty big. Alright. Anyways. Sorry, got distracted. No one did more to improve their stock during the pre-draft process than Santa Clara's Jalen Williams. There are valid concerns about some of his statistical shortcomings while in college, and it's fair to raise your eyebrows about late stock risers. Sure. Williams, however, had an otherworldly performance at the Combine, and with his wingspan and vertical pop, any teams that thought they could get him as a second-round sleeper are now out of luck. He's a projected top 20 pick in the NBA draft, and you told, and if you told me you'd, he'd hear his name called in the lottery, I also wouldn't be surprised. So, Jalen Williams is certainly a guy a lot of you have been looking for. Again, not if you want a power forward, not your guy, but definitely a very, very solid role player. Small, just forward type, guard type. He can play from what I've seen, a lot of different positions. I'm excited for him. Not sure if he'll end up with the Wolves. Not even sure if he'll make it there. Not sure if he's the guy the Wolves take. I wouldn't bet on it. But that's his first selection in to this whole thing. Now, updated tallying is right here on your screen. Blake Wesley once. Ty Ty Washington four times. Marion Bochamp twice. Oshai Ogbaji once. Jalen Williams once, Tari Eason once, Nikola Jovic once, EJ Liddell twice. There you go. Once again, let me know your thoughts on D'Lo, let me know your thoughts on the draft, and let me know your thoughts on everything else going on. Peace, thanks, bye, love it.